Happy Sunday, Jim Army. Welcome to my Sunday Mass. Now, this week, we are going to be covering my new six-week at-home band workout program. Now, obvious, for obvious reasons, uh, most of us are stuck at home without a gym. So, uh, what I've done is taken some of my band programs here and put them together for you guys. For those of you who uh, remember, I've been talking about using bands uh, for, for over a decade, maybe two decades now. I have my gym strength bands. Now the problem here is that these are sold out. So uh, you, you may have a difficult time finding any band system. But if you can't find my uh, gym system, these are made by Body Elastics is the, is the brand that makes these. And the gym bands are, are specialized. One's got a couple bonus uh, pieces to it. But if you go with the Body Elastics, you'll get the same quality bands and now these bands not only have very easy uh, changeable handles here but the nice thing is is that there's a safety mechanism built inside the band so there's actually a cord in here so that if these break the cord doesn't the 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 ends don't come off and slap you in the face the little safety cord keeps it from flying back at you band still breaks but uh, it, it helps to make it far less painful. I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen a few gym fails uh, online and people snapping their bands uh, in several places, if you know what I mean, down here. Okay. So be careful with your bands. Like I said, that's why they, these have a nice built-in safety uh, mechanism uh, designed by Body Elastic. So let's get right into my band program without wasting any time. You guys can go through and read the overview uh, which I highly, highly recommend. One of the things that I'll pull out here in the overview is you get a real nice course on the benefits of bands and what's known as linear variable uh, resistance. You guys have seen me do this over and over again. The real key to the bands is the material and what happens when you stretch it. So as I pull the band, the further I pull it, to continue pulling it, I need to apply more and more force. It gets harder and harder to continue pulling the band. So if you're doing something like a curl, that means you're getting more resistance as you go through the range of motion, which is beneficial for a number of things. First of all, you're recruiting more muscle fibers as you go through the range of motion, and particularly more of the fast twitch muscle fibers because it's getting harder to do. The other thing is it makes it impossible to cheat with bands. You can't get a momentum going to lift the weight. The actual target muscle has to do the majority of the work pulling that band. So uh, that linear variable resistance is what will be discussed mainly in the overview, but it will also break down a few differences between uh, bands. And, and here we go. Here's that table right here. Comparing bands to free weights. And so here are all the benefits that both provide free weight resistance. We go progressive resistance, both provide that. Allows free movement, both provide that. Variable speed of movement, right? Meaning you could go at different uh, rep tempos, both provide that. Increase in muscle strength, both have been, both have been shown in research to prove that free weights and bands. Uh, increase muscle strength uh, as well. Uh, decrease body fat, but then, when we get down into these benefits, provides resistance in multiple directions. Only the bands provide resistance in multiple directions. So today, when we're talking about doing a chest press or a bench press, we don't need a bench because the bands provide resistance in numerous planes, right? But with a free weight, if I took a dumbbell and did this, am I training my chest? No. I'm not fighting gravity. Gravity's up and down, right? So I have to lie on my back to do a movement that targets the chest. Not so with the band. So that's one of the added benefits that bands provides over free weights, multiple directions. Provides variable resistance, linear variable resistance. With the free weight, that resistance stays the same through the entire range of motion. With the band's not so true as I already uh, discussed. Provides constant tension. Bands provide that, similar to uh, cables. 
but with the linear variable resistance, you're not getting that with free weights, with a curl. As you come to the top here, you're not getting much resistance at the top. So you don't really get a peak contraction. When you do a curl with bands, right, as I get to the top position here, it gets harder and harder. So I have to continue applying more and more force and recruiting more and more muscle fiber. So the bands maximize that peak contraction at the top. Another benefit that free weights don't provide. I've already talked about preventing cheating. Bands are very inexpensive, easy to store, and easy to transport. So, when you really break it down, bands provide more benefits than free weights. Am I saying to replace free weights with bands? No, but in this case, where you're stuck at home, you don't have to feel like this is a uh, plan B that's not quite as good as the gym. In fact, Switching right now, whatever program, you can be doing one of my best programs right now. Switching over to an all bands program or an all home training program can actually provide you greater benefits than continuing the, the program that you're on because it's such a wild change, okay? Remember, change is good. So as long as you're providing those muscle fibers, the proper resistance, you can get a workout in anywhere. And so really changing up to bands, don't think of this as a plan B that's, oh, it's too bad I can't go to the gym. When I travel and I take my set of bands with me, I rarely actually go to a local gym or even the hotel gym, okay? I prefer bringing the bands because I can get free weights and machines right here all the time. So when I'm on the road, I like to sort of limit myself, or not really limit myself, but sort of force myself to use the bands for that linear variable resistance. And then I'll also say Kevin Kennard did six weeks to sick arms with just bands and gained over two inches on his arms in six weeks. So bands are not a, a sort of next best thing. They're just different, okay? And in this case, that difference is gonna be your benefit, okay? But like I said, there's, there's, there's science behind uh, these benefits. Now let's go back to uh, the actual program now. Because now I just want to go through the exercises for you, okay? Because I had to sort of scramble here. You know, typically most people aren't doing band programs. So the people who typically tune in and watch me go to the gym or have a pretty, uh, a pretty decent home gym setup, okay? So even though I talk a lot about the benefits of bands, I don't spend a lot of time demonstrating it uh, and putting a lot on my website. So that's what I'm trying to do now for you. Since a lot of these you won't be able to see, typically when you click on these in my app, you can actually see the photo, the before and after, the start and the finish, I should say, not before and after, the start and the finish of the exercise with me doing in a little description. Like I said, because a lot of this is sort of new content here, you don't have a lot of that. So what I'm gonna do is really quickly walk you through these exercises so you have a basic concept of how to do them on your own, all right? So we're gonna start with day one, which is our chest or triceps and our abs work. And so we're gonna start with a standing chest press with a band using one arm. And again, I'm gonna talk about some modifications that you can make. You can do this with both arms if you want. It doesn't have to be one arm. But let's break them both down. So what you're gonna do is take one of the bands, and I've already demonstrated this, you don't have to do a bench press with bands by lying down on a bench. Okay, you don't have to change your body position to fight gravity. So you can do most of these exercises standing up. So if you're gonna do a one-arm chest press here, oh no, I'll demonstrate it with the left arm so you can see this better. You're gonna come up and you wanna pull that shoulder blade back on the left side, stick that chest out, and then we're gonna press, come back, keeping that shoulder blade pulled back, chest out, the entire time. And then you're simply going to switch sides. Now, one of the nice things about bands is you can do a bit of drop sets, if you will. The further I go, right, the further I'm stretching the bands, meaning 
The further I stand from its tether point, the more resistance. So if I'm doing chest presses here and then I hit muscle failure, I don't have to stop the set. I can just back up. Now I've reduced the resistance, making it easier. And now I can continue doing my chest presses. So maybe like on the last set, you might want to do a few drop sets on that third set. Now, you could also do this with two arms at a time by using both handles. If you want to move through the workout a bit faster, same concept applies, shoulder blades come back, chest out, and you're going to press. Wow, where's that coming from? That's bizarre. Anybody hear that one? All right, so exercise two is band standing incline press. And so the difference here is we're standing up, right? So here we had a tether pretty much directly behind us, okay? Just a little bit below uh, shoulder height. Here we're going to come down closer to the floor to mimic more of an incline press. Same rules apply, the shoulder blades come back, chest out. You're going to do your incline press. That's the incline press. Standing incline chest fly with band one arm. Okay, and this is just easier to do with one arm. You could get this set up if you've got the space like I have here uh, to do both arms uh, with the flies. But basically, you're going to have two setups here. You can have the low setup for your incline fly. So that's for the incline fly. And then for a standard fly, you're going to come about just below shoulder height. So those are your flies. And so then we're done with chest. Then we're going to go on to triceps. Going to do triceps press down. Now, over in this station, I don't really have a high point to do my triceps press down. For those of you using my bands kit or most bands home kits, you'll have one of these uh, little door donuts that goes in the door. It just basically goes in the door. Closes on one side, and then you have this strap at the top of the door. That'll allow you to do your pull downs and your tricep press downs. My setup is over here. I don't have a standard door, so I just took one of my ankle straps here, put it at the top of uh, the cable crossover station. This could be a pole uh, in your basement or your garage. This is another way to do that. And then you can do your tricep press downs here. Now, you don't need to use the handles. You can just grab right on here and use a neutral grip, kind of like a rope press down. However, if you want less resistance, the handles will lengthen the bands and make it a bit easier. But again, all you have to do is step back. Now, thing to remember here with the bands on the tricep press down is you don't have to be straight up and down like on the cable, okay? Use a different line of pull, take advantage of it. Try stepping back and feeling how it targets those triceps a bit differently than when the resistance is coming straight down. See the difference here? It's pulling it back a bit more. So you're getting more, you'll feel a bit more in that triceps and that press down. So don't think about it just being straight up and down. Back up away from that tether point. Not only will it change the angle of pull, it will also make the resistance greater. So, Triceps press down. Then we have the band overhead triceps extension. And here you're just going to tether it to a low point. You 
could also do these stand, standing on the band of the back leg. If you don't have a point to tether this to. Well, that's the easiest way to do the overheads. And then the band triceps kick back. Again, you're going to get it at a low point here. I'm going to use one handle. Attach. And remember, the other way to change the resistance here, not just with the bands, not just by stepping further, is if you double up the bands, right, that's going to double the resistance. Okay, so I'm doing it here, and I find this is too much resistance. I can take the band and run it as a single this way. And now I have less resistance and can perform the exercise. So remember, it's another way to change up the resistance. But that's your kickback. And again, you can do this one with the handle or without by holding right on to the carabiner here. So those are our three tricep exercises, pressed out overhead kickback. Then we have three ab exercises. So standing band crunch, going to come back over to our high uh, position. And again, at home, you may have this tethered to the door, over the top of your door. You're going to simply slight bend in your knees. Bring the bands just over the shoulders in front of your upper pecs, and then you're simply going to perform a crunch. You can do this a bit more explosively. Remember, the research shows that when people perform crunches fast and explosively, they use more of not only the ab muscle fibers, but the oblique muscle fibers as well. An ab and oblique exercise. So those are your standing band crunches. Band rising knee is basically a, doing a knee strike. So what you're going to do is take a band, tether it to a low point, then you're going to get the ankle straps. And, and tie that around your ankle. And then the form knees, you're just going to, i got to be kind of careful with this leg as you're going to come up, rising knee. Knee's not that stable. That'll hit those lower abs explosively as well with the band uh, resistance. So that's your band rising knee. And then the last exercise we have is our band roundhouse elbow. And here, you're going to tether this. And this one will be too heavy for me, so what I'm going to do is single that band. You're going to tether this. You want it to be just under your armpit, because when, when you pivot here, so you're going to loop the handle in. You can either use the, the um, stirrup or, or uh, the ankle strap here over around the elbow, and then you're simply going to form a roundhouse elbow. And again, I'm a bit slow with the leg, so you can do this as explosively as possible. The point is you want to keep this under the arm. If it's too high, it'll come over and kind of get wrapped around the shoulder. So keep it just under uh, shoulder height when you're setting this one up. So that's workout one real quickly. Chest, triceps, and abs. We're going to get into uh, workout two now, where we're doing uh, back and biceps. So we've got the bands bent over row. Let me show you both ways that I like to do this exercise. So typically, You would come in and stand on these, right? And then do your rows. This gets a bit awkward. You know, keep getting really wide stance. 
If you've seen my tip videos, here is I just tether the bands to a low point. I'm just using heavy dumbbells. Okay, I've also got a set here tethered to my uh, my dumbbell station. I have a set tethered to my power rack. Okay, and yeah, I know I'm in a gym, but think about what's at home. What can you tether between? You got poles, you got posts, you got two cars, parts. You can pull off the same thing. You don't need a set of heavy dumbbells, okay? So, what I like to do is I like to do my rows this way. The band's kind of stretched out and you can make this greater resistance by pulling the, this wider or lessening it by bringing it closer or by changing the bands or by adding more bands, okay? And so, I'm gonna come right down here and simply grab right onto that band and just like a normal bent over row, I'm gonna pull it up, hold it to the top, get that peak contraction. This is the difference here that you're really gonna feel when you're training your back because you have to recruit those lat muscle fibers to continue pulling this band up. So this is gonna really help you feel the lats better. So try this version and then you can also loop the handles through if you prefer doing it like this. So couple options for a bent over row. It's exercise one, work on number two. Then we have the last, is kneeling lap pull down with band, both arms. You don't, you don't have to kneel, okay? So we're gonna go over to our high point again. And again, this might be your door or whatnot that you have the station at. Now, yeah, you could go down and kneel, which I can't do, okay? I really can't get down and kneel. So, for those of you who can't or don't want to, because you really don't need to, all you need to do is line up your body with the line of pull, okay? So if this is the pull-down station, what would it be doing? I would be pulling this way, right? So straight down. So. I'm going to line my torso up in the line of pull as best I can here and do my pull downs. And again, that not only the constant tension, but that linear variable resistance where it's getting harder and harder to pull, it really helps you to feel those laps, which a lot of people have difficulty feeling. So, expect your back to grow if you're following this program for six weeks. All right, so we did the bent over row, the pull downs. Here's a one arm band row. And you've got a couple options here. You could either do it from about just below shoulder height here, I would double this one up because it's a delight for me. Or you could come to a more lower point here and do that. Like that. So a couple options there. Or one more option is you come right over here and do them this way. It's like a Dumbbell bent over row, either with a hand or you can use the handle. There. And then we have a straight arm pull down with the bands back over to our high point here. And remember, when we're doing pull downs for the lats. Think about the pullover, right? If we bring our arms over our head, all the way down and behind the body. I've talked about this before. It's mainly chest here, in the top position. When you get to about here, there's now more lats, okay? And then the triceps really kick in as you come back behind the body. So, we want to focus on getting that resistance from about where the arms are perpendicular with the body to just past the, the torso of the hip. So, 
I'm going to back up here. You can see I don't need to lean forward. My arms do not need to be any higher than perpendicular with my body. It's perfect. And bring it down and hold it. You'll really, I can't say it enough on the back exercises. You're really going to feel these back exercises better than most of the exercises you guys have been doing in the gym, either with dumbbells or uh, even cables, because of that linear variable resistance. It should make a huge difference in the way that you feel those lats working. And then when the gym is open, you have that better mind-muscle connection, so it'll be easier to feel it when you're using dumbbells or cables or so, all right, we're done with back. Now let's move into biceps. We have three bicep exercises, standing biceps curl with band alternating arms. The easiest way to do these is to just step on the bands. And do your curls, alternating arms. Obviously this resistance is very light for me, so. so that's your alternating curl. Behind the back, band curl. Tether to a low point. And remember the point on this one is that it's keeping those arms behind the body, which is stretching that long head, making it the primary mover during this exercise. And that long head is responsible for more of that peak. All right, that's the second exercise behind the back curl. Then we do a band uh, high curl. Now, with the band high curl, you can either come over here to the high point and do it. So I'll double this one up. Switch sides. But if you can't get a point that high, it's okay. You can. Set it up at a lower point here and do it in a similar fashion. Okay, this is okay as well. And again, you're just going to switch arms. So if you're ever getting the, you're at a point where your home setup doesn't allow you to set up the bands the way that I have, just come up with your own uh, you know, sort of best guesstimate as, as to an exercise that comes close to mimicking that movement. You'll probably get it right, okay? So don't be afraid to alter these for your setup at home. All right, day three. We're going to go through these four, four workouts today. So now we're into shoulders. So we're going to be doing shoulders, traps, and abs again. So we have our band shoulder press. And here, you've got two options. You could try either stepping on the bands of both feet and then simply pressing them. Make sure it's not. Or, put it on one foot, get it even, and then you're going to step forward. And do them this way, the staggered stance. This one tends to be a little more comfortable. So try both versions, see which one works best for you. Band lateral raise. And then I'll go, we'll talk about both of these here. So we've got band lateral raise and band lateral raise, the band's on the front foot. So what we're basically doing is, remember when I've talked about doing our lateral raises, and typically you'll see bodybuilders doing them 
this way, right? Because that puts the middle head of the delts on top. And while that's a great way to target the middle head, the problem is that internal rotation puts the high spot of that ball, the ball and socket, where it can be rub on those rotator cuff muscles and cause shoulder injuries. So we talked about doing your lateral raises where you have external rotation so that that high point is not up there uh, when you're bringing the dumbbells up uh, like this, or your arms up like this. Okay, so what I've been teaching you guys is to do them with a reverse grip or a palms forward grip. The problem here is that when you do this, it puts the front delts on top, so now you're not targeting the middle delts. And so what I have you do is use a bench where you sort of lean forward and do your lateral raises that way, so now that the middle delt is on top. Okay, well, it's the same concept with the band. So we have standard lateral raises where you're gonna have your feet on top of the bands, bands are gonna be at your side. And then you're gonna do your lateral raises this way. Standard lateral raise. And then we have band lateral raise with bands on the front, front foot, meaning you're gonna do a staggered stance. So now that the bands are in front of you, and so now, what happens is it changes the line of pull. It's not straight up and down. It's coming in front and back. And so it's the same concept as leaning forward, okay? The other way I can do this is by putting the bands at a low point in front of us, okay? So you see, this is, pretend I had a really long leg and I could step way out there. You see this, the further I step back, the more horizontal the line of pull versus vertical. So the first one we did had more of a vertical line of pull for the shoulders. Now this one has more of a horizontal. Okay, so you can do this, like I said, stepping on it with the front foot or putting it at a low point in front of you and doing your lateral raises this way. So now, because of that line of pull, the way that I'm lifting it, the middle head of the delt is on top, okay? And so it's just a different way to target that middle half. Lateral raises, so changing up that line of pull can be critical when we're trying to target different heads of the muscle or different area of a muscle. Okay, so we did the lateral raise both ways, front of the foot, then we have the band bent over lateral raise. Now here, you don't really have to bend, you can't, okay? Where did I put that? Oh, here. You can bend over if you want. If you really want to do this, well, like I said, you don't have to change your body position for gravity. You can do these like this, okay? So, what you can do is tether it to a point that's about shoulder height. So now instead of bending over, you just have the resistance in front of you. And now you can do your bent over, quote unquote bent over, lateral raises. This way to target those rear delts. All right, band shrug is next. So we're getting into uh, some traps. And, and with, the, with the shrug, You've got the option again of standing on it. But with shrugs, you've got to go pretty heavy, right? And so it can get really cumbersome when you're trying to stand on these very, uh, the, the, the really uh, high resistance bands, keeping them under your feet. 
standing wide enough and being able to shrug. It's such a short motion that you really, it's hard to get enough resistance on the band. So that's why I like this setup here. To do standard shrugs. You could also do one arm version like a dumbbell if you prefer. And don't forget, you could also use the handle. So that's our traps in day three. Then we get into the band rising knee I've already done. Band roundhouse elbow I've shown you. Stand band and twisting crunch. Same concept as the band crunch. But instead of coming straight down, we're going to come towards one side. Now the nice thing about an exercise like that, even if you're doing it just on the floor, the twisting crunches, those abs, you know, your abs don't just work to either flex or bend you to side to side. They twist as well. And so using those muscles uh, to shorten under resistance like that in different directions really helps to sort of etch in all those, uh, the abs and build them uh, from all different directions so that you can see them popping through your shirt. Remember guys, you need resistance whether it's band, free weight, or machine on your abs just like any other muscle group to truly get them uh, developed. So that's workout number three and then we'll go right into workout number four here and finish up because each week the exercises stay the same for each workout, but the rep ranges are going to change. It's period. So we have legs for workout number four, so bear with me as I try to demo these uh, for you. But a band squat, the easiest way to do this is to stand on the bands. And then what you're going to do is if you have them at your side, you see this, you're really not getting any resistance, right? So to add the resistance, you need to bring the bands up. So you're gonna hold them here. It's almost more like doing a front squat where the weight is on the front of the shoulders. And then you're just gonna squat. And again, bear with me guys, I'm recovering uh, from quadricep uh, surgery here. So down and up. That's pretty impressive for me. And that's your squat. Obviously, you're going to go with more bands to uh, add more resistance. And then we're going to get into the band step up. You guys have probably seen my videos uh, demonstrating this one. So the way I like to do this one is I like to have the resistance behind me. So I'll tether the bands to a low point. And here again is this is key, the line of pull, okay? Because now we're not just fighting gravity, right? We have our own body weight, which is fighting gravity, so we're getting resistance vertically. As we if I just came up without any well even holding on to these, right? I'm fighting gravity, which is vertical, so I've got resistance going in that direction. Well, now with the bands tethered behind me, I have more horizontal resistance trying to pull me back. So it's far more challenging. So I've got, and again, I've got to be careful with this left leg, but you get the concept. So now not only do you have the resistance from your body weight, with that vertical, uh, vertical resistance from gravity, but you have more horizontal from the bands pulling you in that direction uh, as well. So give that a shot when you're doing uh, band step-ups 
And this is just a setup I have here to make it easier in the gym when I'm doing bands, but again, you just wrap that around the pole uh, or other low points. Then we have the standing band leg extension. So again, you're gonna take the ankle strap here. And let's see, I'll single this one so I can come out a little further from here. So if you can't hold on to something for balance, if you don't have anything uh, around that's uh, stationary, you could use like a, a broom uh, or just a stick or whatnot to hold on to. And then you're gonna bring the working leg up, bend it, and then simply extend it. Feel that quadricep contract and then back. And then you're gonna switch legs, which I can't really do, so you'll have to imagine it on the left leg. So that's our band leg extension, and our barbell straight legged deadlift with band. Easiest way here for this one is to have the bands at this low point here. And then you're just gonna do just like a regular stiff legged or Romanian, if you wanna do a Romanian version where you're hinging more. And then the last leg exercise is the band leg curl before we get into calves. So again, for the band leg curl, similar to the leg extension, you're gonna do this one standing. And again, if you hold on to something stable near you or just use a broomstick or whatnot, you're gonna keep this leg forward and then you're gonna Curl it back. Now another way to do the leg curl is you can do it standing. And here I'll show you with it just sort of balanced on my heel here, where you do it this way, but you see how it'll run down the leg a bit. So what you can do is take that ankle strap that I had over there, run it through the band here, same way, and you can wrap it around and then do your standing leg curl out. So just to give you some options there. And then we get into calves. So standing, this is barbell, I mean, you're not using barbell uh, with the bands in this case, okay? So this originally, uh, this program had a, a combination of both bands and some barbell uh, band exercise where you're attaching the barbell to the bands. If you've got that set up at home, that's great, but, but don't worry about it. Where you see that, you're going to use this set up here. You're just going to do a standard uh, standing calf and a seated calf. So with the Standing cap, it's a little awkward to do because you need to keep it instead of back under the heels or the, or the arch, you need to have it under the balls because that's where you're going to be coming up. So you're going to do just like the, the, the squat where you're going to come up. And you can do this on a board to get more of a stretch. So that's a simply standing cap. And then with the seated one, what I'll typically do is I'll use this setup here where the bands are tethered low and then take a, a chair. Let's see if I can get this one in here. 
I'll do it. I'll have to do it back. So I get a chair, and you can get a uh, a uh, a block of wood here if you want. But you simply and I got to be careful of this leg. You can put the bands on the thighs just above the knees, and then do your seated calf. Just obviously, this isn't enough, but I can't put any more resistance on that leg. So. That's really the easiest way to do your seated cab with bands. So that's really your, your band program in a nutshell. I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on those exercises so you can get right to it without any second guessing yourself what, if you're doing it properly. You can watch this real quick just to run down through the exercise. But don't forget, I'll be back with plenty of tips while we're, we're all stuck. Uh, at home uh, during this uh, little episode. So don't worry guys, I've got plenty of concepts and ideas for you to keep training at home so you don't lose your gains. All right guys, remember this is my six weeks band training program, jimstepani.com. All right, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for training with me as always guys. Thanks for being Jim. Army Strong. I'll see you soon with more at-home tips.